Hi there, my Finesse 126 sewing students. In this sew along tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to construct and sew together the last sewing project of the class, which is your boxer shorts. So we're gonna be doing view B, and before you even open up this packaging, know what size you're gonna be making, which we have discussed and learned about in class, uh, how to measure yourself to know uh, what your waist size is and all that good stuff. This tutorial is not about how to read the commercial pattern. You've already read a lot about that in your textbook and you've watched another video. This is all about how to put it together and it's a guide or reference for you to check out and sort of work on your own if you need to when you're not in class. All right, so let's get going. I'm going to be doing, again, view B, just like you, and I'm going to be putting together a medium size. It doesn't matter what size you're putting together, the steps are exactly the same. So once you open up your envelope, there are the directions, which you are welcome to actually look at and become familiar with, even though I'm here to explain them to you. But before we even get to that, your actual tissue paper pattern will need a little bit of ironing. So what I do first is I'm going to cut out the size that I need. And then with my iron set on a very low setting or not really hot, I'm going to iron out all of the creases and if there are any folds. So as you have discovered, these tissue papers are quite large. So you're gonna need a large working surface. And if you don't have um, a really large surface, you can even work on your floor. That's absolutely fine. But before we even get to ironing and actually cutting first and ironing out, what I wanna show you is the key so that you understand which pieces you need. Cause you don't need to cut them all out because again, we're just making view B, the shorts. Okay, so for view B, you're gonna need pieces five, six, and seven. Okay, so all of these pattern pieces here are numbered, right? So for example, here's five, and the number is nice and bold. So again, you just need these three pieces here. You're gonna need pieces five, six, and seven. So as I am working with my tissue paper, I'm just gonna cut out those three pieces. The other ones, I'm gonna fold this up and put it right back into my envelope. The good thing about this particular project is that the three pieces that we need happen to be on one tissue sheet. So that's good. So here's five, here's six, and here is seven. So I'm going to cut them all out following, just for seven, following the black solid line here. And then because I'm doing a medium, I'm going to follow the uh, dotted line here. So you're going to make sure that well, I'm going to make sure that I'm following this dotted line and not this one or that one. Some people, if you're really new at this and you think you're going to uh, make a mistake, you can actually take a highlighter. If you, Again, if you think you're going to make a mistake and actually highlight in pink or whatever you have yellow, the line so that you know which one to follow. I have done this many times, so I'm okay not doing that. And I'm going to follow the medium and cut this out. And for the... Um, pocket. I'm going to do the solid line. I'm repeating that I know. And then over here, I'm going to use that same solid line to cut out uh, the medium. All right. So here's the thing about pattern five. Since we're making the boxer shorts, we are going to cut over here. Okay. You are going to save the bottom piece down here in the event that in the future you want to make the full pajama pants. You'll just tape it back on and continue the same sewing. So since we're making the boxer shorts, we're going to cut right here. We're just going to follow right here where it makes the turn. And this is if you want to sort of elongate or make really long boxer shorts. I mean, that's up to you. I say follow this line since we here are beginners. So what I'm going to do first is what I always do, and this is just my way of doing it. I kind of do a really rough cut, and yes, these are my paper shears. Um, I'm doing a rough cut all the way around, so I just separate, without following the line, I just separate all three pieces. So that when I'm cutting, I have them all separate. So I have piece five, I'm pushing it aside, then I have piece seven and P7. 
26. So now I'm going to take my time and I am going to cut out along the medium line on all three of my pattern pieces. So for pattern five, six, and seven, I'm just gonna keep following this dotted line. And I'm even double checking that I have it right. Again, if this is too much for you uh, and you're like, wait, I'm losing my way, definitely highlight it because um, I think it may be helpful for you. So as you're cutting, you're gonna notice your notches here. This is a single notch and in some areas you have like double notches. Well, on the pocket we have double notches. What some people do, and it's a total preference of yours, is they actually cut a notch this way so that it reminds them to cut it out of the paper. And I will move out of the way to show you in a second. I'm actually gonna rip that off because I will never need that size. They do this. This is totally up to you. For the pattern here, I'm not gonna do it because I don't like my patterns cut out that way. But if you want, you can leave yours this way. Meaning when we cut this out of fabric and this little triangle is sticking out of the edge of your boxer shorts, that's to match it to the other piece. It's kind of like a puzzle piece. Like we know that they go together that way. I'm gonna take mine off because I don't want it there. And I will show you how we are gonna measure, or I'm sorry, how we are gonna mark these on the fabric. But if you want your sticking out, definitely don't cut it off and cut it the way I cut it. And here's an example of triple notches. So what you may wanna do is you may wanna cut this way. You can cut out all the notches separately, like sticking out, or you can do one big cut like this. So you know, I'm not gonna leave mine because I mentioned that before. You can do like one of these cuts. So it reminds you to uh, leave that large notch there. But again, I'm not gonna leave mine that way, but you may choose to do that. And if it doesn't make sense to you right now, not to worry, it will when we're tracing on our fabric. So I'm taking mine off. So I have the three pieces cut out, piece five, piece six, and piece seven. And I'm gonna iron them on a very low setting. But before I do that, I wanted to show you how I get the other pattern pieces that I'm not using back into the envelope. So I don't know, maybe you've struggled a little and that is totally normal to struggle. And um, I should have told you earlier, you don't even have to try and attempt to follow the same folds because here's what I do. I fold it so that it somewhat fits. Well, this one doesn't, but just for example here, and I kind of iron it down once I have it folded. This time I don't give it a shot of steam because it is, uh, water and I don't want to get it onto this paper here and it kind of flattened it out to the way it was before and now it fits really nicely in there and I'm going to do the same thing to the other one so that it fits nice and uh, even and smooth in there kind of looks like you didn't open it all right so if you like to be neat that's really helpful <laughs> so here we go I am going to not give it any steam again and just give it a quick iron right through so that I take out the creases, nothing serious. It doesn't have to be too hot because if it is, your ends might end up curling. So I think I, I'm a little too hot. I'm gonna put it on two, just quick. So it's flat. And do that to all three pieces. So if you are at home cutting this out and you're gonna start constructing your boxers at school or in the sewing lab at school, you obviously don't wanna iron it yet. Just fold it back up, put it into the envelope, and then you will do the ironing in the sewing lab, right when you're ready to lay it out onto the fabric, mark it and cut it out. My next step is to lay the patterns onto the fabric that I'm gonna be using and cutting them out. So. This fabric here is actually sort of like a remnant cut in odd uh, ways here, as you can see. It's whatever I had at home, so I'm, I'm gonna be using this. 
And if you look at the instructions of the boxer shorts, you're gonna see here the layouts on how to do this. So more than likely your fabric is not gonna be all sort of, you know, different sizes everywhere like mine, but um, this is very helpful, this key, to understanding how to lay it out and how to fit all of your uh, pattern pieces for the boxers onto your fabric. Again, I'm gonna be there with you, helping you out as you do this, but this is just, again, a good source. I really can't follow this too much other than the grain line because mine's cut in all different ways. So I'm gonna show you how I do mine, how I pin it down or use pattern weights and how do I, I actually cut it out. And those steps are the same for you. Definitely iron your fabric if it has any creases or folds in it because you do want a nice smooth surface or smooth fabric to work with. So my selvage edge is right up here. And as you can see, I have folded the fabric right sides together. This is the way we always cut with the fabrics right sides together. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually not gonna be able to lay out all the pieces at once because my table isn't that big, but you probably will if you have a good piece of fabric cut, meaning, you know, straight off the uh, bolts and it doesn't look like mine will sort of, I don't wanna say piece, but you see what I'm saying. Over here is a little bit shorter, this is wider, but it's okay, this is normal. What I am trying to fit on here is completely normal when you're sewing because um, you just don't wanna waste fabric. So I have now number five. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna show you slowly with number five how to do this. Here is my line or my arrow showing me that the grain should go this way and you could even check on the key of your pattern that i just showed you let me just grab it it's showing you here again what exactly what i'm doing selvage edge so mine is right up here my selvage edge and it's showing you number five should go this way just like i have it laid out so when if you're not sure always look at your key it's really helpful so now once you have it down what you're gonna do is continue placing your other pieces. So I know I said I wasn't gonna do it this way, but I'm gonna try to help you just in case you're gonna start cutting one area and then you're like, oh my gosh, I have no fabric left. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna lay mine out. Okay, I know that fits there. And now I'm gonna fold this one higher up here. So I guess my table, I guess is big enough. Let's see how I can fit this. And number six, again, is gonna go this way, right? So here's my arrow for the grain direction, and I'm gonna lay it here, okay? I'm just laying it here just to lay it there for a second, okay? I didn't pin it down yet because I wanna make sure I have enough room for the pockets. This is why you wanna make sure your pieces always fit before you start cutting, because I'm telling you, sewing should be fun and not aggravating. <laughs> so here we go. Pocket right up here, you have to cut four of these. So you have to cut two of the boxers front and back. So because it's folded and on here, when you cut, you have your two pieces, right? You fold it, you're cutting once, but you get two pieces. Same for this piece, so you're good with that. But for this one here, it's telling you for number seven, you're gonna need four pieces. And what this means is you're gonna have to place it twice somewhere, here and somewhere else. But I already see that it doesn't fit. So for me, because mine doesn't fit, I'm gonna have to move some things around just to make sure it fits. And I know it does, because it did before. Oh, actually, here we go, right up here, see? Mine fits now. Okay, so what that means is I'm gonna place it down, I'm gonna pin it in place, and I will cut it out and then I will move ahead and do the same there. So that way I get two plus two and I have my four pieces. So this is all preference, meaning how you cut this out is all up to you and how you prefer to do it. You can use pattern weights where you put your weights all around the pattern and it holds it down and then you trace with your scissor all around the actual pattern without cutting the paper pattern. So let me show you what that means. Using my fabric shears, I trace, well, really I'm cutting, but I'm tracing around the pattern. And I am opening the scissor and closing it down all the way. I'm not doing quick snips like this or cutting snips like this. You will get straighter cuts if you bring your scissor down all the way. 
Again, it's important to keep everything flat and work on a flat surface. And you do this all around the pattern to cut it out. So that's one way with fabric weights. But if you don't have fabric weights, um, you can also pin it. All right. So fabric weights, these are just like washers I got from my local Home Depot. If you're not using these, what you can also do is pin it down. Some people use like cans of food and all that. It's what, whatever holds the pattern down. Or you can just pin all the way around. So when you're pinning, what you're going to do, let me zoom in on here, is you're going to go in and out. So on the underside, you just see one or sort of like a little bit of the pin. Okay, so what I just did flipping it over is not a good idea because you don't want to move the fabric under this pattern. So let me just collect all my weights and go all the way around. And some people don't even like to trace the pattern this way, meaning what they do is they actually take their pencil or their chalk marking pencil, whatever it is that they have, and they actually trace around the pattern. So they'll pin it down. They'll trace around the pattern with their pen or pencil, but the proper one for your fabric. And then what they do is they remove the pins, they repin the fabric, because you don't want to cut without your fabric pieces pinned together. And then with their shears, they cut all around. I think the extra step of repinning the fabric takes me longer, so I just like to do it this way. But it, again, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. The main thing is you keep it down and even, and you don't uh, put any folds into your fabric. So now my pattern piece is all pinned down. Oh, actually I'm lying. Here's another one. And guys, this is some common sense, but I'm just going to show you anyway. Notice how I'm pinning the way I am actually going to be sewing. If you decide to pin perpendicular like this way, that's, to that's totally fine. But if you do, make sure your straight pin does not stick out from your pattern because your shears obviously can't go over your straight pin and you don't want to damage your shears. And now that it's all pinned down, I can continue cutting. So again, you just trace right along the fabric with full cuts. And watch how I cut where the darts are. I'm sorry, did I say darts? I mean the notches. So you see how you have a notch here? I'm going to show you how to cut that out. There's a few options of even marking it as well, but I think cutting it out for, because of the fact that you're beginner sewing is smarter. So when I get up to it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a shape the same way, but go in the opposite direction. Here's what I mean. So I'm making a little triangle. It doesn't really matter if the triangle's crooked, just as long as it's in, at that same spot right there. Okay, let me show you what that means by cutting away. From here so do, do you see that there let me just zoom on in you see how I just made a little snip mark so when you're sewing these are going to be the two spots that we match together when we pin first and so we know like we need to make sure those match and touch each other so there are other ways of marking it on the pattern but we're just gonna keep it this way for now since we are beginner sewers Actually, let me flip it this way. It's easier for me. And I'm going to continue cutting. Carefully noting that there's no other notches. Sorry, I was out of view there. And now I have another notch here. Right, so I'm going to just slowly get up to it. And if you're like hey, maybe I'm, I'm going to pass it with my scissors and um, forget to cut it. You could even mark it with your chalk pencil or whatever you have so that you don't forget to uh, actually mark it. But I luckily didn't forget. But trust me when I tell you I make these mistakes too. Okay, 
one right here. I sh tend to shift my patterns around a lot when I, I'm working, just as long as it stays really flat on a surface like that, you're okay. See, there you have the other notch. And now here you have a double notch. So I'm gonna come around. So up. I'm just gonna cut it out as one large notch. You can actually cut the two peaks separately, like the two little triangles sticking out by themselves. I just don't even think it's worth the energy to do that. Okay, and here we go, it's cut out. Now some people, instead of cutting notches, what they do instead is they cut actually like into the pattern a little so when they're sewing they find that little little tiny slip mark they made but again as i repeat since we are beginner sewers we're going to do it this way so this pattern five is cut out now i'm going to do the same exact thing with pattern six and i'm going to cut four out of pattern seven and before i move on to cutting the other pattern pieces i just wanted to mention before you remove your pins and put aside your pattern pieces both the paper and the fabric you're going to want to carefully read your pattern to see if there are any other markings we need to make so we already made the notches the double notches and the single notches and as i'm reading along this pattern there's no other markings we have to make so i am going to cut out the other piece but when i get to the pockets there are actually markings we have to make and I'll slow it down just to show you exactly how to do that. So on this pattern here, and even the other piece I cut out, it does say waistline here. There's no need to actually mark that line there because when we are ready to make that waistline where we stick the elastic in, we're gonna be using our hem gauge to measure that one and a half inch down. So it's really pointless to mark that. Okay, so on to cutting more, or actually my last four pieces, the pockets. And if you think this piece looks very similar to the other piece, meaning the front and back pieces, what you could do with your uh, marking pencil or your chalk pencil is write back or even front on the other one. I'm just going to write back on it just because you don't have to. It's not required. But um, another way to figure it out is to actually take the pattern, lay it on and say, oh, OK, that's my back piece. They're not exactly alike, but. In the event that you may find them a little confusing, you can mark them because it will wash off. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make the markings on the fabric. So the pattern is telling us we need to make markings on the actual fabric in this spot. So we're gonna do it on this 
fabric here and also on the other fabric in the back. And we are, because this is the wrong side of the fabric, we're actually making them on to the wrong side of the fabric. Anyway, your marker is washable or even your chalk pencil. So what these markings are is, it shows us where to stop sewing when we're attaching the pocket to the boxers, either front or back. Because this here is the opening, so when our boxers are complete, this is where we stick our hands into our boxers to get to the pockets. So how to do that? I think this is the easiest way, so I'm gonna do it this way and show you how to do it this way. With your either chalk pencil or your fabric marking pencil, either one, you're gonna put your pin, because this holds your spot in the center of the circle there. Let me see if I could get in closer, yeah. As my pin moved, here we go. And I'm gonna leave the pin in and I'm gonna move the paper pattern out of the way. So now I see where my pin is and I'm gonna make a nice dot there. I'm gonna exaggerate my dot a little bigger only because I chose to use, or really this was the only fabric I had to make this tutorial. It's kind of dark and busy, so I made mine a bit larger, but I typically don't make them that large. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. As I struggle here, it always happens, right? On camera. And I'm gonna make it there. Again, a little larger because I can't see. And now on the back, because remember there's two pocket pieces here, we need to put it in the same spot on the back so I know I'm right there. So I'm gonna give myself a nice dark white dot there, if that makes any sense, a dark white dot. <laughs> and then on the back there, this is where my pen is, and I'm gonna mark it right there. All right, so now that my markings are complete, we're gonna move on to the next step. So let's review all of the pieces we just cut out and that we need to make the boxers. So you have your four pocket pieces right here. They're cut out. Then I have my two back pieces. And if you recall, I did mark mine. And then you have your two front pieces right here. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take one back piece and one front piece, and we're gonna sew it together. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that and the easiest way on how that's done. So here is one back piece, right? So when we sew, we always sew with the right sides together and we sew on the wrong side. So how do we know? I took one back piece here, cause there's two back pieces and two front pieces. This says back, and this is a front piece. And since we always sew with the right sides of the fabrics together, so right sides touching each other, they're together, I know that this is the, or these are the two pieces that go together. Because if I attempt to put the other right piece on, or the other front piece on, as you can see, it doesn't fit. Okay, it doesn't match up. And some people would make the mistake in doing this, but that's not a good idea and that's wrong because when you sew it together, that's gonna be the front of your boxer. So that's not good. Remember, always right sides together. We always sew on the wrong side of the fabric. So then when we open up the boxers, the good side is showing. That's what we want. So again, just to repeat, this is a back piece. Doesn't matter which one you start with. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see it better. And this is a front piece, and I'm gonna pin it on the inner leg seam, which is this short side right here. So this is where we use the notches. The notches need to come together. So I'm gonna put my notches together first, and I'm gonna pin right there so I know that they are together and they match. And that's the whole point of the notch, to make sure that your patterns are exactly where they're supposed to be and they match. And then I'm gonna match this side as best as I can. And I'm gonna match this side. And if you cut it well, you'll notice that it's a pretty easy thing to do because your patterns match or your fabric patterns that you cut out match. What I'm gonna do next is go to my sewing machine and sew down this side here of the inner leg. 
and I'm going to backstitch on the ends. And I'm not going to choose any seam allowance that I want because the directions tell me to do a 5 8 seam allowance. So it's really important to do the allowance that the directions always tell you because this way your garment will fit. All right, if you did a different seam allowance, you would get a different size. So I'm going to stick to 5 8 and I'm going to, yes, backstitch on the ends. And then we'll come back and decide how to finish the seam. So a few things before I get started. I am purposely using a color thread that does not coordinate with my fabric so that it sticks out, you know, like you could see it. Um, but typically what you want to do is choose a color that coordinates. So if I wasn't doing that, I'd probably choose a black, something dark. And I'm also going to use my seam guide here, which is magnetic. And I put it right into place there so that it holds my 5 8 seam allowance. If you don't have this, you could use masking tape or anything else to make sure that you stay within your 5 8 seam allowance. And I'm setting my stitch to two and a half. And now I'm ready to go. So again, I'm gonna back stitch on the ends and continue. I remove my pins as I go so I don't have any issues. If the dart, or not the dart, what am I saying? If the uh, notch is throwing you off, you can cut it off before you sew, but it actually just folds out of the way. You see it? It just, yeah, folds out of the way. Move my pins. And I'm going to backstitch on the end. And now I'm going to trim my threads. It's a good idea to always trim your threads as you work so your work does not get messy. And I think we can see that. So I've gone ahead and trimmed off my notch here because I've decided to finish this seam allowance with the stitch and pinked seam. So you're going to have to decide how you finish your seam allowances. It's whichever seam allowance you prefer and you want to continue practicing. So what I'm going to do is, according to the directions, is I'm going to sew the same exact stitching line about a quarter of an inch away from my edge. And then after I'm going to go using my pinking shears and cut along that. So I'm going to, well, actually, I know that my machine from the sewing needle to the edge of my foot is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to use the edge of my foot as my guide instead of my magnetic guide. Now I'm going to go pink it with my pinking shears. Again, the finish you make is totally up to you. It's whichever one you'd like to continue practicing. Now that I have these sewn together and with my seam allowance here ready to go and my seam edge finished, what I'm gonna do with the other two pieces just like this is repeat the process. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna take these and place them just like I did with the other ones, right sides together. All right, I'm gonna match the notch here. Remember, right sides together, super important. And I'm going to pin them in place. And once it's pinned in place, I'm going to go back over to my sewing machine. And I won't show you on video because I just went through this. If you need to see it again, just back up 
the video or the tutorial to where I showed you how to do this. I'm going to sew a 5 8 seam allowance. Then I'm going to sew again a quarter of an inch close to the edge. And then I'm going to pink it with my pinking shears. Now I'm just going to give my seams a nice press. So on the bottom, there's like a little fold here, as you can see, you can open up that fold so that you press it correctly. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. I'm feeling that the seam is folded over to one side. And I'm opening up that fold so that I don't press over it and it creates a crease, which I'm trying not to have or actually take out. Yep, and it's down here. Fold and just give it a good a shot of steam. On to the next step. Now we're going to sew these pieces that we've just sewn together together. And here's what I mean by that. Lay one out flat with the right sides facing you. And then the other one, which should be matching exactly, you're going to lay out right on top of it with the right sides down, touching so this wrong side is looking up at you. What that means is, as you know by now, the right sides are together. So what we're going to do after I match this up is we're going to sew right around this U shape. But what we're going to do first to make sure we have this correctly and we do it well so our boxers come out well is we are going to first start pinning at the center seam there. So this is a seam which you probably can't see because of this dark fabric. So I'm going to find that seam. So again, this is at the center or the bottom of the U here and I'm going to bring the seams together. And when I have them perfectly together, I'm going to put a pin right there, like right through the seam so that it holds it right in place. And then I'm going to keep pinning. So as I'm pinning, I'm making sure the edges of my fabric are matching up. So if you're pinning and your fabric looks like this, like it's off, it's wrong, fix it and be as neat as possible. The neater you are with pinning and sewing, of course, the better your boxers will come out. So here we go. This is your double dart here. They're matching, so that's a good sign. And that's what they're there for, to make sure that they match. So my pinning is done and ready to go. And notice how I don't have a million pins all around. I just have a pin about every four finger widths apart, if you could see there. You don't need so many because it does get in the way when you're actually sewing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew starting from one end, doesn't matter which end you want to start, and with the 5 8 seam allowance according to the directions, we're going to sew all the way around the U and come back up and do a back stitch there as well. But in order to practice some of the techniques that we learned, what we're going to do here is right about here, since this is the crotch area is we are going to do a reinforcement stitching. So I'm going to use my um, pencil to make a mark here and a mark here so that I know I'm going to be sewing regular two and a half stitch here. And then as soon as I get here, I'm going to switch my machine over to a much smaller stitch so it's tighter and stronger. And I'm going to make it all the way around here. Then I'm going to switch back to the two and a half and finish off there. Okay, so we're doing some reinforcement stitching here. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get started. I have my seam guide there so that I'm at five eighths of an inch and I'm gonna start at the end. And I'm gonna back stitch. Moving my pins out of the way as I get to them. I'm 
just going to ignore my little dart there. I keep calling it a dart, my notch there. And now I see my marking coming up. So since I am at two and a half or 2.5 stitch length, I'm gonna bring it all the way down to a one. And I have my dial here, which you can't see, but I did, I brought it down to a smaller stitch and now I'm gonna continue. Sorry for the little shake there. And I'm making my way, notice how I'm going slowly, making my way all the way back to the other marking. And now I'm going to bring it back to two and a half and do regular stitching or regular side stitch. Again, the notch is just gonna fold up and get out of the way. we go we have sewn all the way around this area here so now I'm going to decide to uh, choose another finish for my seam here or the seam finish here I'm going to decide to do the over the edge zigzag so before I start my over the edge seam finish I like to use a piece of scrap fabric left over from cutting out my pattern pieces and what I'm going to do is pick and choose the perfect length and width of my zigzag stitch. And sometimes I just like to play around with it to make sure I get the exact one I want. Like I don't like that it's not wide enough. So I'm gonna increase the width of my stitch. And now I have one that I like, perfect. So I'm gonna go with this one right here, as you can see. Right? I always like to do that on a scrap piece just to make sure we're good to go. All right, so I'm putting the edge in under my presser foot. And if you remember, your stitch or the end of your zigzag actually goes over the edge of the fabric. I had a little issues there if you could hear. It's totally normal. Okay, and here we go. I didn't put my fabric, well, too far in, and the end of the edge of the fabric, the corner there, kind of got stuck in under there. It's a common thing. And what I'm gonna do now is cut off the notches so that this could go smooth. And I'm sewing the over the edge zigzag. So here is where we are at this point with our two pieces sewn together at the U shape here and you've chosen to or you've chosen your own seam finish that you wanted to use for the edge and finish here and we have also reinforcement stitch there and of course your right sides are together. So the next step, what we're going to do is we are going to sew on the pockets. So when you sew on the pockets, be careful that you're only sewing on one piece or one actual yeah piece of the fabric they're not together and you're not sewing on a, a pocket like this because um yeah you're going to be an upset <laughs> so open this up and we are going to match the notches so as usual we take the mat the notches and again that's what they're for to help us match the pieces together and we're going to make sure right sides and right sides are together if you see here okay uh since there are four pockets you may get confused at least i did when i was a beginner sewer and here is how you know you have the wrong pocket this notch will match up with that notch but here's how you know you're wrong okay your 
wrong side is touching your right side. So if, if you're if that's happening with your pocket piece, it's the wrong one. So take the one where you're matching it and it's right sides together. Okay, that's what you're gonna do. So you're gonna do these one at a time so that you don't um, overlap and accidentally sew in some fabric that didn't belong there. What I mean by that is sometimes when there's two layers of fabric, students don't realize and they accidentally sew over two and then they're stuck with their seam ripper taking it all out. I'm using about four pins. That's all you really need here. Pocket pinned in place. I'm gonna pin the pocket on this side. So it's the correct one because my right sides and right sides are together. If you want to have funky, cool uh, boxers, you can even switch out pockets with a classmate, meaning you can have different a different pattern inside for your pockets. So if you think that's a cool idea and you wanna do that, you can see if anyone in the class wants to switch out their pocket pieces with you. So you could switch your four for their four and you can have a totally cool and different pattern for inside your pockets. It's just a thought on being different and having really unique boxers. So here are my two pockets, uh, I was gonna say sewn, actually pinned in place. And what I'm going to do is flip it over and repeat the same process here. So what I like to do is, yeah, just make sure there's no folds under there. There's my notch. And now this one's pretty easy because there are only two pockets left to pin in place and they should match. I'm getting my notches first. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin the last pocket the same exact way. Okay, and this one here. I just flip my fabric around to make it quicker for myself. I always double check, even though I know the right sides together, it's like one of those things. You don't wanna get so far complete or you think you're complete with the sewing project and then you realize you have a mistake because that's when you uh probably heard that sewing could be tedious and annoying but it's totally not if you take your time and you really follow the directions you'll be okay but trust me i've been there where i'm just like okay i need a few days break <laughs> okay so now i have this i have my pockets here and then See this here? I have this pocket here and I have this pocket here in place. So what I'm going to do now on all four ends or all four sides, I am going to go over to my sewing machine and with a quarter of an inch, according to the directions, I'm going to sew from the top pocket edge here. And it's easy to see because it's the wrong side. I'm going to go down again, quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down to here. And I am going to backstitch. Something I wanted you to note and be really careful of when you're sewing the pockets on this is the only part that you are going to be putting under the presser foot and sewing meaning make sure because you see how this folds over make sure you don't have these together all right because then you're going to be using your seam ripper to pick out seams you're going to sew this one on separately meaning keep this pin together and only this goes on under the machine or under the presser foot. Then after you can move it around and just get this part under the sewing machine presser foot. So before I sew the pocket on, I put my machine back to the straight stitch. Cause if you remember, I last sewed the zigzag and if I wasn't careful, I was about to zigzag this part. So again, with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I know the edge of my presser foot is a quarter of an inch. I'm going to sew straight down with 
uh, back stitching on the ends. Now I'm going to back stitch on the end and I'm going to repeat the same process three more times for the other three pockets. So my um, sewing machine happens to be pretty heavy duty and actually goes over the straight pins, but ours at school are not heavy duty, so definitely remove the straight pins. And two more times and I'm done. I won't video that because at this point, you know exactly what to do. At this point, here's what this looks like. When you open up the sides, you have your pockets there attached. And the same on this side. So what I want you to do now is figure out on this small area here or the small seam area, you need to figure out how you're gonna finish that seam. All right, so for the project, it's required that you have three different seam finishes. So you can go ahead and figure that one out here. And remember, you only have a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. So choose one that works for this area and do that to all four sides. So I'm gonna do a zigzag seam finish for my four sides of the pockets. And this is the one where you make a smaller zigzag seam, not as wide, and then you just really trim the edge. So since I have only a quarter of an inch space there, I don't even think I need to trim. And this zigzag does not go over the edge. It just goes close to the edge. All right, so I'm just gonna feed through the area where I sewed on the pocket. Really, I'm gonna follow where the seam I've already sewn is. So I've already tested my zigzag on the scrap fabric, but I didn't do that on video. And it's so close to the edge that I don't have to trim. Now I'm gonna repeat that three more times. So trim off your notch. Now as I'm sewing, I'm gonna be careful that the zigzag doesn't touch the seam because if it does, you're gonna be able to see it uh, in the area of my pockets where I stick my hand in. And I, I definitely don't wanna see that. Now that I've added the seam finish to the pocket edges here, what I'm gonna do is press the seam towards the pocket. So here's what it looks like so far. When you open it up, it looks like that. And I finished with a zigzag seam. And like I mentioned before, I didn't bother trimming close because the zigzag is already close to the edge. So what you wanna do now is construction press. And you want to press the seam towards the pocket. So this is the wrong side. You see how my seam here, I'm folding it over towards the pocket. And now I'm gonna press with my iron. And you wanna do that to both sides. So eventually I'm gonna do the other side. I'm just gonna quickly do this side here because it's convenient for me. Um, the seam is under, right? So I'm feeling for it and I can feel that it's going towards the pocket. So I'm gonna do that there. Okay, 
Now I'm going to continue that. So on both sides, seam is going towards the pocket. And for the opposite side as well. I'm getting a little lost here, guys. It's normal. <laughs> if you are getting a little like, wait, what side was I working on? Listen, I'm going through it too. But that's just me. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other two pockets. Construction, press the seam towards the pocket. So I'm feeling the seam under here. It's going towards the pocket. I feel right through the fabric. I'm giving the, fab uh, the fabric, the pocket here, a little pull, just so that the seam opens up and it's not folded over because then when you press, you're creating a seam that you're gonna need to get out. And make sure you do this to all four pockets. All right, so now let me show you how to fold these boxers right sides together so that we can pin the front to the back. All right, so you're gonna take the top here, right? The straight top here, not where the bottom or the legs are. You could see, cause the crotch is there. And you're gonna take one top or one end of the top and bring it over to the other end of the top. And that's how you know your boxers, as you can see here, sorry, I shaking the camera again, um, you could see that it's starting to form the boxers. All right, because this is where we're going to be putting, let me flip it around. This is where we're going to be putting the elastic. And these are your pockets that eventually will, you know, be tucked in. And your legs go through here. So what we're going to do, since we have it right sides together, make sure they're right sides together, is we are going to pin. And just like before, I'm going to start pinning on one side and I'm going to make sure I get these end seams together first. I'm going to pin the pocket area after. And get that corner together and remember as you're pinning make sure your seam allowance stays pressed towards the pocket meaning you don't accidentally um, pin it so that it goes the opposite way it does make a difference to your finished boxers see how i am matching the edges of the boxers as i'm pinning Like before, a pin about each four finger widths apart. Now I could do and focus on the pocket area, making sure they match. Here is my notch. That matches. I've got two pins in there. Here we go. And I just double check as I'm pinning that it lines up. And now I have this pinned on the sides and around the pocket. And I'm going to do the same exact pinning on this side. Remembering to lay the seam allowance towards the pocket.
With my boxer shorts pinned front to back, like I just showed you how to do, I am ready to now sew the sides. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm always gonna use that 5 8 seam allowance, is I'm gonna sew with this small straight edge here, or small space, or short space, and I will backstitch on the ends. So I'll backstitch at the beginning and at the end right there. And I know I'm at the end when I reach my uh, folded over seam. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same sewing right here at the longer part of the leg. Again, back stitching on the ends. Then what I'm going to so, do, the side pocket. So this is where we need that marking that we made before. So from right there, I'm going to start sewing. So you can start on the actual seam allowance here and you're gonna sew in just a little and you're gonna go all the way around with your 5 8 seam allowance and stop right there, okay? And you'll backstitch. And if you're not sure and you need a clearer image of that, you can look at your directions and it shows you that drawing right there. And that is step four. So now I'm going to sew the small area here first, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the longer area down here. So I have my seam guide set at 5 8 of an inch. Backstitch at the beginning. And I will backstitch at the end as well. And now for the longer area. So since I have my seam guide, I'm gonna turn it this way. It doesn't matter really what side you sew because both sides are the inside. And I'm gonna do that same seam allowance. Now, as you're sewing, here's something that I didn't mention before. Make sure this is the only fabric in your or under your presser foot. That is the only thing you're sewing. Sometimes some students get a little messy with it and they don't realize that some of the or the other end of their boxers are under the foot and it all gets caught together. You don't want to do that. So I'm sewing up to where my, I see where I did my seam allowance on this side. So you can see it from here because I use the bright pink. That totally doesn't match, but now you see why I use that color. Okay, so now I'm going to go around the pocket like I mentioned before. Again, with a 5 8 seam allowance. I'm not moving my pins out of the way because I happen to have a heavy duty sewing machine that takes the pins well. But for the school machines, I think I said it before, but for the school machines, I don't trust them. So definitely move them out of the way before sewing on them. You don't want to sew on them. Just have to shift a little to get this all to fit under here. If you remember at this very edge there, it kind of went a bit forward. And yes, I did sew over the seam allowance. You saw I laid it flat and I went over it and I did my back stitch. We will clip it in a moment. And the same exact sewing you're gonna do to the opposite side. I won't do it on video because I just did it for you. If you need to, just move the video back and watch it again to do the other side.
Now that everything is sewn in place, what I'm gonna do is sew a straight line right on top of the pocket there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side or this pocket. It's just to close off the top of the pocket. Again, a 5 8 seam allowance. As I shifted that, here we go. And I stopped right at the seam line there. And I'm gonna repeat the same line of sewing line on the other side to close off the other pocket. So now that we have the sides sewn together and the pockets, we're gonna do this to both sides near the pockets. And here's what we're doing. We're gonna clip back the seam allowances. So above the pocket and below the pocket. And here's what it means. So when we turn it right side out, we want it to turn smoothly. So what I'm gonna do is clip, you see where the sewing line is here of mine? I'm gonna just give it a clip right here because it's kind of stuck in the seam line, which it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna clip just where the seam is so that when I turn it around, it doesn't tug and it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing there. And here, I know this is hard to see with this pattern. And then I'm going to repeat on this side. See, um, again, if I try to flip it, it's stuck in the sewing line, which it's supposed to be stuck, but we are going to free it. Right, and on this side, and then flip it over, and we're going to repeat the process on this side, and this end. So before we move on to create the casing at the top of the boxers for the elastic, what I want you to do is finish with the seam finish the pocket, and you're going to do that separately, meaning when you're sewing, don't catch this edge or this seam of the boxers here. And then that same finish or whatever finish you want, because the project does require three finishes, you're going to finish the edges here. So since here I used the stitch and pinked, I'm going to use the stitch and pinked on this side. And then I'm also going to finish off the pocket with the stitch and pinked. And I'm going to repeat the same here just to make it match to do the stitch and pink right here on video because you've already seen me do it for this part of the leg here. And the next step with my boxer still wrong sides out is I'm going to take the top part here and create the hem. So what I am creating is a one and a half inch hem that folds down and then there's going to be a quarter of an inch at the bottom here folded under. So I'm gonna show you the way that I think is the simplest way to do this because the directions tell you to fold the first one of the one and a half inch and then to do a quarter inch under. And I think that could get a little tedious. So here's how I do it. I flip the boxer so that uh, the top of the boxers are towards me. And I have my hem gauge set at one and a half. And first I'm gonna press the larger hem. So I'm gonna fold out and I do like to start where the seam is and I'm folding out just to measure and check out what one and a half looks like. So we're about here. Okay, can we see that? I know this pattern is a bit busy. So one and a half is there and I'm gonna press that right in place. Thank you. 
right so what i'm going to do since it's pressed right in place i'm going to just add a pin i'm not going to add so many but just a few so that it really doesn't move and here we go again i'm going to go all the way around the top of the boxers creating the one and a half inch hem making sure it stays at one and a half it doesn't get wider or shorter in any way i'm not going to pin all the way around because we have to unpin to do the quarter of an inch hem as well so it is created purposely for this pocket to get sandwiched into the hem there but i still made you finish it in the event that something is off it shouldn't be if you're following the directions as i provide it but you never know so i had you finish off the top there so you see how my hem is getting a little larger there i'm going to pull it down just to make sure it measures one and a half all the way around And now I'm going to create the quarter of an inch. So in the event that you find it really simple to just take a quarter of an inch as is like this and fold it in, you can go ahead and do that. But I find it for me a little tedious and I don't like it doing it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over and I'm, I'm going to remember that I have a crease there and I don't want to iron over that because um, I just created it and it is my marking spot there so i'm going to just fold another one here and i'm going to keep my iron again away from that crease so it's just a small seam right at the tip I'm going to just keep going all the way around until I make it around the entire boxer top. So I have started pinning my casing in place. So if you flip it over, you'll see the quarter of an inch under here and that's flipped in. And then you have the rest of the casing, which if you subtract a quarter of an inch, it's an inch and a quarter here. And as I was pinning in place, I was making sure that it is about an inch and a quarter. So I was going around pinning and you're gonna do that around the entire a perimeter of the top of the boxers but as you get to the pockets the pockets are designed to sort of tuck right under let me get in view there the pockets are designed to tuck right under the casing okay so um actually the directions say to do a quick basting stitch get it under remove the thread but i didn't <laughs> let you do that so what I am telling you now to do is to tuck it under the casing there and it's going to be held in place. But here's a really important thing to do before we even start sewing this in place and even pinning it in place. You're going to want to make sure these pockets go towards the front of your boxers, right? You don't want to stick your pockets in and your hands go towards the back. That makes no sense. So I know this is the back of my um boxers because i did mark it i actually had to remark it again because uh the pencil wore off so i know that now my pockets face the front and i'm going to make sure that this one faces the front as well and tucks right under that casing 
and it's right there in place. So I'm going to make sure I'm all pinned around and then I'll show you how we're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this casing in place, leaving an opening for the elastic to go in. And another note that I almost forgot to tell you, as you face your pockets towards the front, make sure that the seam with it goes also towards the front because if it doesn't, you'll see it, it sits a little funny, right? So that means these seams, everything goes this way towards the pocket and then we fold and fold and it lays nice and flat so my next step is to go over to the sewing machine and sew this casing in place so I've gone ahead and marked where I'm gonna leave the opening for my casing so that I could slip the elastic in so what I'm gonna do is sew very close to this edge and I'm going to start on one side, doesn't matter what side, and I'm going to backstitch and work my way all the way around, staying close to the edge until I make it to this end, and then I'm going to backstitch. Then once I do that, I'm going to make the same exact sewing, but on this edge here, very close to the edge, but I don't need to leave an opening there. You really can't because there's nothing open there all the way around until I meet the same point, and then I will backstitch. So some sewing machines have a free arm, which means you could remove this piece here and your sewing project fits right under it so it rolls well right under. Um, it's your choice if you decide to do that. I'm not sure if the classroom ones do that, but if so, you can remove this piece. And mine actually is missing a little door here, but we're just gonna ignore that. Okay, here I go, knocking the camera again. Okay. We're gonna start on this edge and we are gonna sew very close to the edge and we're gonna work our way all the way around. Now, as I'm sewing, you're gonna see I'm gonna take it slow because I want a nice, neat, clean stitch. And also I'm using pink, so you're gonna to totally see it on the opposite side when I'm wearing them. So I'm gonna take it easy. And as I'm sewing, what I meant to say was that uh, I'm going to make sure my quarter of an inch is still tucked under. Okay, here we go. I just work my way all the way around. And now that I'm about to reach the other marking, I'm going to backstitch when I actually reach it. Right there. I actually overshot it in case you notice, but I have plenty of uh, space to get in there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the same exact stitching at the very, very tip here, going all the way around.
And now that I've reached where I began, I'm just going to do a quick back stitch there. And I'm going to trim up all of my uh, work here so that it stays nice and clean as I go. And your next step is to feed the elastic through the opening of the casing. So I've already attached a safety pin on one end that I'm going to feed through here. And then the other end, I'm going to just secure it to this end of the opening. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed it through. And this is how you do it. It's actually really simple. Making sure it's not folded so I keep it flat. See how I ran my fingers over it? And I'm gonna just feed it through with the safety pin. And I'm feeding the safety pin through, really. So he, my safety pin is right here. And what I'm doing is I'm feeding the fabric on and then I'm pulling. So I'm feeding the fabric onto the safety pin and I'm pulling. Did mine? Okay, sometimes the safety pin will open. I was thinking mine did because it was uh, giving me a little trouble, but here we go. And I keep pulling it through. And I keep just pushing it and pulling through until I reach the opening. So I've made it to the opening and there's the other end. I'm just going to pull it through. I'm going to give it a stretch and here we have it. So I am going to unattach this end of the elastic and sew it to this end. But before I do that, what I want to do is I'm going to actually just attach them just to make sure the elastic did not spin around in the casing and here's what I mean. Sometimes it tends to turn around in there and trust me, you don't wanna wear a garment with that cause it'll be, sorry about that, it'll be uncomfortable, right? So I thought it was doing that here, but no, I got it. Here we go, we're good. So I'm just checking in now before you sew it together, uh, an inch overlap, you wanna try them on to make sure it, uh, the waist is good and it fits you. If it's too large, you can just adjust like this, like literally bring the elastic over and tighten it or loosen it to whatever point you want or is comfortable for you. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make mine a little smaller and I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I am going to sew up and down here. You could even zigzag it if you want. Um, up and down a few times. You're, you're going to see that I'm going to go down and just back stitch a few times to really secure it in. And I'm going to do it again over here so that I tack these on. If you want, you can even create a box with an X in the center. You could do anything. You just want it to really uh, be strong and will not fall apart when you're wearing it. As I'm holding it in place, notice I'm not even using pins because it's such a small area and I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to just go forward and back a few times. Let me just adjust myself, here we go. So reversing and forward a few times, I don't know, five or six times, just to secure it in, okay? And then I'm going to do the same exact stitching. See, it's on one end. I'm gonna do it on this end as well. On this side as well. I keep shaking that camera. I really apologize, guys. And here. All right, and now I'm gonna clean up all of these hanging threads. If your sewing lines here on your elastic aren't 
neat, like mine aren't super neat, it doesn't matter because when you uh, really think about it, these are hiding in the casing and no one will ever see it. <laughs> so here we go. I'm getting it right in place here. You're going to have to just probably move it around a little just to let it fit. And then you're going to go ahead and continue your stitching just like you did before you fed the elastic into the casing. What I mean by that is I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and continue this line right here and sew it close. And I will backstitch on both ends. I won't even bring you over to the sewing machine because that is super simple. Then after I do that, um, I don't want to give this elastic the chance for it to actually flip around. It probably won't, but because of that, what I'm going to do is on each seam, so there's like two seams here, actually the front seam and the back seam, I'm just going to quickly run one straight stitch down here and another one here. It's not necessary that you do it, but I'm going to do it because I want to make sure my elastic doesn't flip around. So if you understand, I'll just repeat that again in case you don't understand. I'm just going to make a straight stitch right there, right on the waistband and another one right there. You're gonna see mine because it's pink, but you won't see yours. And this will prevent the elastic from ever really shifting around inside the casing. And these boxer shorts are almost done. We just have to add the hem at the bottom here, which actually is the same exact measurement as the casing, same exact way. So here's how you do this. I kind of flipped it around towards me. Actually, let me go this way. It's whichever way you're comfortable with. It's the same thing, one and a half inch. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my quarter of an inch first, and then I'll fold my second hem at an inch and a quarter. So a quarter, an inch and a quarter equals an inch and a half. So I set it at a quarter and there we go. And I'm going to work my way all the way around. So I got to the center here where the center seam is. So I'm going to go with the same way it is folded at the crotch. So it's going this way. I'm going to fold it that way as well. Because if not, it'll stick out and sort of twist as you're wearing it. And trust me, you don't want that. Now that the quarter of an inch is done, I'm going to go ahead and make the inch and a quarter, which of course equals the inch and a half.
Now that the hem is created on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, not on video because you can just watch this one again if you need, to this side. Same exact thing. Now we're gonna sew the seam in place and I'm gonna sew close to the edge on the inside here, just like I did to the casing. I'm gonna make sure that just one layer of my fabric is under the presser foot that just fell off, but one layer is under there and I'm not catching the other side of the leg because then that's issues that I don't wanna deal with. So make sure you do the same. So as I've mentioned before, my machine goes over the pins. You're gonna be safe and remove yours. And I am taking my time because what I like to do is make sure that that quarter of an inch is still tucked under and hasn't moved. As I meet where I began, I'll do a quick back stitch. And that's it. I'm gonna do the same exact sewing of the hem on the other leg. And that is the last sewing step for the hems at the bottom of the legs here. So I wanna say we're all done, but one really good thing to do before you're always ever done with any garment is to give it a press, especially where your uh, hems and seams are. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is the front of my boxers. My pockets go in towards the front, which is good. And look at them. I mean, they came out just adorable. And I think when it comes to boxers, there's really no wrong or right pattern there. It's all fun. So what I'm doing now is just putting my iron on the inside of the leg and I am just giving it a good quick press. So we set in that new stitching and all that good stuff and all around, all right? You can go ahead and press the whole thing. You can even open up the pockets. So I won't do it all on video, but I'll be in class helping you do it. And um, you can take the outer edge here, the seam, from the inside you could press it out and you can give that a good press so it stays in place and looks clean see how nice that is now and the same thing on the other side anyway that was it that is how you put together your boxers i hope you enjoyed this and that you really understand how a simple garment is put together. Now your next step, you are actually done, but your next step is to fill out the rubric and hand it in with your completed boxers.